You've likely heard the term big cats, which generally refers to members of the genus Panthera, along with two notable exceptions, the cougar and the cheetah. Together, these animals represent some of the most successful carnivores on the planet, with over 70% of countries having at least one big cat species as a top predator. This widespread dominance is no small achievement. In fact, the lineage of big cats stretches back millions of years, with the first emerging during the late Miocene, roughly six million years ago. However, big cats aren't the only formidable carnivores out there. Another well-known group, the Canidae family, commonly referred to as dogs, includes domestic dogs, wolves, coyotes and foxes. Like big cats, canids have a global presence, but unlike their feline counterparts, most canids are smaller in size. Even the largest wild canid today, the grey wolf, is only comparable in size to the snow leopard, one of the smallest big cats. This naturally raises the question, where are the big dogs? The answer is simple yet fascinating, they're long extinct. But once upon a time, giant canids roamed the earth, thriving and dominating their ecosystems. The most fearsome and massive member of this group was the ancient bone-crushing Epicyon. Despite being the largest canid to ever exist, chances are you've heard little to nothing about this prehistoric predator, as it hasn't found its way into popular media. Yet, Epicyon has been known to science for quite some time. Its first remains were unearthed over 160 years ago in Nebraska, USA. The discovery consisted of a highly fragmented yet recognizable lower jaw that resembled that of a wolf. Based on this, it was initially classified as a subgenus of Canis. However, as additional fossils were uncovered over the years, Paleontologists realized that Epicyon was far too distinct to belong to the Canis genus. As more complete skulls were discovered, including the upper portions, it became clear that Epicyon's skull wasn't as wolf-like as initially believed. In fact, its head, with its enlarged and specialized premolars, bore a closer resemblance to that of a lion or hyena rather than a wolf. However, while its skull set it apart, the rest of its body was still distinctly canine in structure. This raised the question, what exactly was this mysterious creature? The answer lay in its unique skull. The specialized premolars and the robust nature of the jaw were hallmark traits of a specific canid subgroup known as the Borophaginae. This subfamily is one of three that make up the larger Canidae family and includes 66 species all characterized by powerful teeth, shortened jaws, and the presence of a fifth toe. Members of the Borophaginae roamed prehistoric North America for over 15 million years, ranging dramatically in size, from animals smaller than foxes to those larger than grey wolves. Epicyon was the largest of them all, so massive that its name translates to more than a dog. Interestingly, not all Epicyon were true giants. There were three recognized species, Epicyon sevus, Epicyon elurodontoides, and Epicyon hydeni. Both sevus and elurodontoides were smaller, more slenderly built species, while hydeni stood out as the true behemoth of the group. Relatively speaking, even the smaller Epicyon species were quite formidable, with adults often weighing twice as much as a German Shepherd. However, Epicyon hydeni was the true titan of the group. Fossil evidence shows that fully grown individuals routinely measured an impressive 2.4 meters in length and stood about 90 centimeters tall at the shoulders, making them as long as a grizzly bear. This massive frame translated to an average weight of 100 to 125 kilograms, comparable to large jaguars. Yet, Epicyon hydeni also displayed a significant degree of size polymorphism, meaning individual sizes varied widely. 
one exceptional specimen based on measurements of a giant humerus bone belonged to an adult estimated to weigh a staggering 170 kilograms. This made it the heaviest known canid, rivaling the weight of a medium-sized lion, the second largest feline species. This immense size allowed Epicyon to hunt larger prey than most canids, both extinct and living. But size wasn't its only advantage. Epicyon also had a ferocious bite that set it apart from most other predators. Along with its enlarged premolars, it had exceptionally large canines positioned unusually close to the back of its lower jaw. This unique placement helped concentrate immense force on the tips of its canines during a bite, delivering devastating damage. This lethal bite was further enhanced by powerful jaw muscles and robust jaw bones, making Epicyon a predator in a league of its own. Estimates suggest that Epicyon had a bite force exceeding 16,000 newtons, comparable to that of large American alligators. With this immense power, it could easily pierce the skin, flesh and bones of its prey, likely targeting vulnerable areas such as the neck, head or spine to deliver a swift and fatal attack. Analysis of its teeth and the habitats it occupied indicates that its diet included camels, horses and even rhinoceroses. For these larger prey, it's believed that Epicyon may have relied on pack hunting, as evidence suggests it was likely a social animal. This theory is supported by the behavior of other Canidae family members, nearly all of which are known to be highly social. All living canids exhibit a higher degree of sociality than most other animals, and many also cooperate in hunting, with exceptions like the red fox and manned wolf. Beyond theoretical parallels, Fossil evidence supports Epicyon's social tendencies. Its remains are among the most common of Miocene predators in North America, a level of abundance typically associated with animals that exhibit pack behaviors. The structure of Epicyon's body also provides indirect evidence of its social nature. Unlike most canids, it was built more robustly, with heavy, stocky bones supporting its massive frame. This design made it less agile and poorly suited for sustained running. Instead, it relied on short bursts of speed, which would have made cooperative pack hunting an advantageous strategy to compensate for its reduced endurance. Together, these traits paint a picture of a powerful yet social predator that thrived in its environment. It's also possible that Epicyon was a solitary hunter, and if that were the case, it would still have been highly successful. Likely, it would have specialized in targeting slower and larger prey than its competitors. However, whether hunting alone or in packs, Epicyon had one trait that set it apart, its remarkable bone-crushing abilities. As noted earlier, Epicyon had an incredibly powerful bite, but its teeth were equally specialized. Its premolars and thickened molars were short, pyramid-shaped, and wide at the base, resembling the teeth of hyenas, which are famously adept at consuming bones. Paleontologists believe Epicyon likely shared this ability. Its robust skull and powerful jaw muscles would have made it easy to crunch through bone, granting it access to the nutrient-rich marrow within. This resemblance to hyenas is an example of convergent evolution, as the two species are not closely related but developed similar traits to meet similar needs. Evidence of this bone-eating behavior comes from fossilized feces containing significant amounts of bone, confirming that Epicyon could scavenge and make the most out of every kill. This trait would have been particularly advantageous during times of scarcity, allowing Epicyon to exploit resources other predators might have overlooked. Living in North America during the Miocene, Epicyon faced a dynamic environment where the climate fluctuated between hot and cold, wet and dry. These changing conditions brought significant challenges to the ecosystem. In such a setting, the ability to access and utilize bone marrow would have been a critical survival advantage, 
ensuring Epi Scion could thrive even during difficult periods. During difficult times, Epi Scion had another advantage to fall back on, its versatile teeth. In addition to crushing bone, its molars and premolars, with their grindstone-like surfaces, may have enabled it to adopt a partially omnivorous diet. This adaptability could have allowed Epi Scion to consume a variety of foods, including fruit, tough plants, vegetables, and of course, meat. Similar dietary flexibility is seen in modern canids, like the manned wolf, which, according to some studies, derives over 50% of its calories from plant matter. However, it's unlikely that Epi Scion relied on vegetation to such an extent. Nonetheless, this varied diet undoubtedly contributed to its success. Epi Scion was able to expand across much of what is now the United States, with its remains found in over 10 states and even reaching southern Canada. It thrived in a wide range of habitats, including woodlands, savannas, grasslands, wetlands, cave systems, and transitional edge environments where two habitats meet. This extensive range also brought Epi Scion into contact with a diverse array of other species. Among the mammals it coexisted with were Amabelodon, Calippus, Spermophilus, Perognathus, Eucaster, Aepicamelus, and Neohipparion. It also shared its environment with numerous reptiles, including alligators, rattlesnakes, vipers, boas, and king snakes. This rich and varied ecosystem highlights the adaptability and resilience that allowed Epi Scion to thrive for millions of years. Epi Scion shared its territory with a variety of other carnivores, including Agriotherium, Barbarophilus, Machairodus, foxes, and bear dogs. The abundance of predators in its ecosystem has sparked significant curiosity about how these species might have interacted. Unfortunately, no direct evidence of these interactions has been discovered. However, due to its immense size, Epi Scion likely dominated most confrontations. Smaller predators would probably have avoided it altogether or even surrendered carcasses as only Agriotherium and Barbarophilis rivaled or exceeded it in size. The success of Epi Scion is evident in its incredible longevity. Fossil records show it thrived from 20 million to 5 million years ago. A span of 15 million years, an impressive testament to its adaptability and efficient design. Despite this, even this apex predator was not immune to extinction. The reasons behind Epi Scion's disappearance remain uncertain, but for a long time, the prevailing theory was that the arrival of giant cats in North America sealed its fate. However, this theory has been largely debunked. Many of the large cats that could have competed with Epi Scion, such as Smilodon, appeared well after its extinction, with Smilodon living around 2.5 million years ago. Instead, current research points to climate change as the primary factor. Around the time of Epi Scion's disappearance, global temperatures dropped and aridity increased, causing significant shifts in North America's ecosystems. These environmental changes likely disrupted Epi Scion's habitats and prey availability, ultimately leading to the extinction of the largest canid to ever walk the Earth.